Okay, so afternoon we're going to have a go at uh, crab apple and chilli jelly. Now this is a uh, really nice sort of thing to have with meats, cheeses, virtually anything really, because you've got nice sweetness and then that kick from the chillies. So basically all you need is these crab apples. I've been out and picked a load of these this afternoon. Um, they grow wild all around the farm. So I've got a couple of bags of these. You need um, a kilo of crab apples, 50 grams for every kilo of red chillies, then 1.3 litres of water. Basically you need just need enough water for it to uh, for the apples to float. So we're gonna have a go at that. Um, oh, the only other thing you need is a little pinch of or touch of lemon juice and at the end you need some sugar. I can't tell you how much sugar because that depends on how much juice you get out from the first part of the process. Now this is going to take unfortunately two days um, but don't panic it's very easy all you do you boil it up strain it and it's the strain that takes the time you just leave it draining overnight basically and then the next day depending on how much juice you've got out then you, you go on to the next process but that will all become obvious and uh, It'll only be a few minutes for you because I shall edit it into one video. So let's get cracking. Let's go and uh, cut some of these up and get them in the in the pan. Okay, so first off, I'm just going to weigh some because um, I haven't got a clue how many I've got. So I'll just get an idea. I'm going to try and do um, sort of two kilos worth. In there. Right, that's 1.4 in there. I don't know why I didn't just put the bag in the first place. Let's uh, get the other bag. Oh, no, that's two, two kilos there, so I might do three kilos worth. Let's just get chopping them up. You don't need to uh, peel them, pit them, do anything. Just chop them into bits. They're quite tough. So we've just got to do that to the whole lot. So as you can see, this is probably going to take me quite some time. So what I shall probably do, I'll get these done, and then I'll come back and show you what's uh, the results. Obviously, if you get any really dodgy ones. Some of them have got pips in, big pips, some of them haven't. I don't quite know why. Okay, so I've just about got all I need cut up. Um, it's a good job that I bought or collected over three kilos because it's been particularly frustrating. I don't know if you can see how many of those. That's just the, out of the last few that have opened. They're all rotten. Got either maggots in or earwigs and I don't know if you'll be able to see out there. Probably can't see. The garden is littered absolutely littered with 
apples that were rotten. So I don't know if it's something to do with the particularly hot summer we've had, that the whatever preys on these has uh, been prolific, but I've been doing this for quite a few years and I've never had anything like it. Never seen so many rotten with maggots, earwigs, all sorts of things inside them. So anyway, what's the next job? Okay, we've got to get some water in there and chop up the chilies. So let's uh, have a go at that. Right, so let's get these chilies chopped up. Now you want to keep the seeds in these, so I'm just going to take the ends off of these, nasty green end. on my knife. Right, these want to be chopped up pretty fine. do when you're doing this don't rub your eyes you will regret it even worse don't go to the toilet till you've thoroughly cleaned your hands actually this knife isn't much cop let's try this one this is the one I made in one of my previous videos Seems to be chilli seeds going everywhere. Hope the dog doesn't come in and start chomping on them. Doesn't matter too much. Not that fine, but it just helps a little bit. Right, get that lot in. Right. So let's just have a bit of a clear up, wash my hands, get this chili seeds off them, and uh, get some water on the go. Okay, so let's get some water in there. Let's 
two litres. I think we're going to want just a little bit more. Right, the stuff's. Let's have a look. Just floating. So, we we'll give it a stir and get it on the go. Let's get the temperature on and see what happens. Okay, let's go over and have a bit of a stir, get some of these chilies submerged. Right, so this is going to take some time to get going. We've got quite a uh, quantity here. So we'll let it get going and I'll come back once it's uh, on the go. Right, so I made a bit of a balls up really. I overfilled it and this one um, was coming up over the top. So I've had to decant some of it into a smaller pan. It won't matter, it just means, you know, we do two panfuls. And you can see that's just simmering nicely. And the, the apples are just starting to go into a bit of a mush. So I'm going to leave this going for about half an hour, three quarters of an hour maybe. Just so they go into real, real mush. And it uh, reduces a little bit. And same with that one. Give that one a, a little go. So whilst that's doing that, I'm going to go and watch some motorbike racing, and then I'll come back and show you what we do next. Right, so this has been going now for about 45 minutes, something like that, and you can see it's turned into like a soup. The apples are nice and mushy that's just about perfect and you can see it's turned a sort of a slight pinky colour so the next job we've got to strain it now because I've made more than I normally do I normally put it through a small um, it's not exactly muslin it's a, a straining bag I think they use it for jam it's got four hooks on it and you can just hang it on things but that's not going to take all this lot so what I'm going to do is I've Got a pan, a colander, and a sieve, and I'm going to put muslin over the top and hope that's going to be enough because this has got to drain overnight. So let's give it a go, see what happens. Okay, so I'm just going to start ladling. I still don't think this bag is going to be enough. And then I could use the original bag that I was going to use for the rest of it, hopefully. Now, whichever way you do this, resist the temptation to squeeze it. If you squeeze it, it will turn cloudy and it's not very attractive. It doesn't affect the the product but it's it just doesn't look very good so don't squeeze it All right, that one's just about full so I'm just quickly swap it over for the Next one. All right, so this is the one I normally use. It's just like a, a bit like a hairnet with it's got these loops around it, which you can hang it with. So I'm just going to fill it up and then hang it. In fact, I might even be able to pour it. Let's have a go. Nearly all 
ね。And then, basically all you do, you gather up your corners, and you pick it up and you can hang it, and you leave it to uh, drain, and that's all you do. Don't squeeze it. So I'll hang this up, we'll come back tomorrow, and have a look see how much juice we've got. Right, so I've managed to um, rig up another little bag there. So we've got two bags on the go. We've got the original bag that I said I always use, which is stuffed capacity. And as you can see, it's literally just drip, drip, drip. Uh, so we'll leave that overnight, and as I've rigged up another one over here for the remainder, we'll come back tomorrow see how much juice we've got because that determines how much sugar we put in and then we'll get on with the rest of the process so we'll see you tomorrow right so next morning it's dribbled its last dribble that one's just got one drip on it and we've got a pan full of, or a couple of pans full of juice and that's what we shall save so we'll get rid of this lot and move on to the next part of the process. Okay, so day two, it's um, strained itself overnight. I've amalgamated the two um, potfuls. So now all we've got to do is figure out exactly how much juice we've got, because how much we have determines how much sugar we put in. So I think that's the thing I'm going to do next. I'll get the uh, original pan and we'll see exactly how much we've got. Let's see if I can pour that into there without losing too much. It's a lovely sort of pinky colour. Oh, that is sour. Right, let's have a look and see what we've got. Let's get the old bins out and see what we've got. We have 12, 1300 millilitres. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to work out exactly what that means in the way of sugar. So let's quickly do that. Um, I can find the recipe. Okay, so I've worked out that we need, for that quantity, about a thousand grams of sugar. It's just, for 570 millilitres you need 450 grams. So for 1140 you want, uh, what's that, uh, 900 grams. So it's a little bit over, it's around about a thousand I reckon. So. Let's uh, stick that in the pot and weigh some sugar. Uh, let's stick that in there. Alright, let's uh, get some sugar on the go. Yep, it's weighing grams. <laughs> I've done that before, I did it in a different um, whatever. The pot's not big enough. There's not 
even 500 grams in there yet. There's an awful lot of sugar going in this. So we'll put 500 in there. There we go, that's 500. We'll dump that in. The rest of this. Luckily, I've got some more here somewhere. There we go. Right. Another five hundred. Dump that in. Wipe. Okay. So next job. So I'm just gonna. Get it going. Put this uh, scales away. I'm just going to stir this as it gently heats to just dissolve all the sugar. So this shouldn't take too long to come to. A gentle boil. All of these things that I do, these um, sort of hedgerow stuff and any of my uh, sort of jams and jellies and stuff, would be so much easier on gas. When this finally packs up, I'm going to have a gas hob, an electric oven. Gas is so much more controllable. And it gets stuff like this hot really quickly, um, and for because you've got to get this up to a certain temperature, it's you know a high temperature. This hot takes its time. Right, it's starting to dissolve. Yeah, can't feel any crunchy bits in there. And that's on full blast and it's not particularly doing anything very fast. Never mind. Alright. What shall I do for a minute or two? I'll go and uh, find the lemon juice. That's probably a good idea. I haven't got any real lemons, so I've got bottled lemon. It's real lemon juice, but it's in a bottle. I'll go and find that. Right, so it's almost up to the boil. Um, it's taken quite a while, but it's also got a really thick scum on the top. So just before it boils, I'm just going to take it off the heat and just skim the scum off the top. So we're almost there. Get myself a. Uh, what can I use? Just use a wooden, uh, a metal spoon. Right, that's just about to boil before it does. This is what you get. This white scum. Ow! And it's bloody hot. <laughs> I don't know what the scum is, but uh, you always get it. Let's do 
be a bit careful getting it off. You don't want to sort of split it up too much. I think the more you get off, the clearer it becomes because it's um, it will go nice and clear. It looked cloudy to start with. Burnt my fingers. But it's it does go clear. And so if you get all this out, make sure it's really nice and crystal. I think that's about it. A little bit more there. Get that one bit out. with a bit more of a ladle type. Get this out. Right, that's got the worst of it. There's a little bit there. Right. I think that's about it. Back on the heat, stick in the lemon juice. It doesn't need a lot, just a couple of splashes. That'll do. And the other thing that you don't have to have, but does make life easier, sugar thermometer. And I don't know if you'll be able to see on here the different scales. So what you've got to get it up to is put it in there before it goes mad. Um, now that's a good point actually. I'll have to look up and see which one you've got to get it up to. It's boiling quite nicely which is unusual. 105, 220 which is It's just under now already, but it takes forever to do that last couple of degrees. I don't know if you can see that, but that was quite low in the pan. Yes, you can just see it, and that's bubbling almost going to come over. That's why I'm doing it in such a deep pan. Um, and you've got to keep an eye on your thermometer, and when it reaches that magical 220. I just say, can take some time. Then you take it off the heat and just put it in jars. Until that temperature, if you don't reach that temperature, it won't set. It will just be a runny mess. I hope it's not going to boil over. <laughs> Keep a good eye on it. It's getting horribly close to boiling over. Just move that off the heat for a second. Pass the heat. It's still only two. Two fifteen. Another five degrees to go. Quite a lot of um, moisture coming off it. I think it's basically boiling off the water um, when it gets to the right temperature and all the water's gone. Two sixteen.
see why you need a deep pan. That's why the gas is so much more controllable, you can just turn that down a little bit. If you turn this down, it takes so long to cool down. Two eighteen. And if you haven't got one of these thermometers, there isn't another way you can um, test it. Just put a little spoonful on a plate or saucer, leave it for a few seconds to cool, or a minute maybe, and if it skins over, you try and pull the top off and it's like a skin, you're at the right temperature. But these things, they're, they're relatively cheap and I use them for all sorts of things, not only this sort of thing. While I'm waiting, I'm going to try and keep an eye on it and uh, put some jars in some hot water just so that they're nice and warm to pour this into. You let this cool a little bit, not cold, but let it cool a little bit. Pour it into hot jars, put the lid on, and when it cools, it seals the the jar, you get like a vacuum, so you get that nice pop when you open it. I don't think that's going to boil over. Almost there. Really close. So, let's find some jars. Get some warm water on the go. Wash my hands. That stuff's really sticky. The amount of sugar that went into it, no, it's not really any surprise. Get rid of that scum. Wash up. doing is just filling each one with hot water, only from the tap, you know, that hot. as the, the moisture or the, the water has uh, evaporated. We're down to more like the syrup now. You don't want to be putting your fingers in there anyway, that's for sure. It's pretty damn hot. So close. 19 and a bit, almost there. So we're getting close. A bit more tidy up. It's uh, been spitting a bit, it's a bit messy. I'm going to leave it untidy for when Her Majesty gets home. Almost there. I'm going to leave it for a minute and I'll come back when it's done. Okay, looks like it's done, but I'm just going to check, so you know, we can try this little method. So I'm just going to put just a little bit, see there on a saucer. I'm just going to leave that for a second or two, and see what happens. Leave it to cool. To my eyes, 
which aren't very good. That's there. I'm just going to check with this. fridge for a second. It might uh, speed things up. Got to be there. It's not a particularly difficult process, but it's a little bit long-winded. I don't know how long this has taken me overall with the preparation and this part. But we're nearly there. All you've got to do now is bottle it. And once it's bot cooled, you can use it. I don't know how long it keeps because we never kept enough left to keep. Um, we eat it with everything. Meats, cheeses, you know, absolutely everything. Well, I'm going to say that's there. Let's just check this one out there and see if that's cooled enough. Yeah, you can see, well, I don't know if you can see that, that's skinning over. If I can get close enough with that, you can see the skin coming on it. That's, see there's a blob, it's gone hard, so that'll do. So, let me just try it as well. Oh, that is lovely. Right, so take it off the heat. Turn that off. So I'm just going to leave it uh, to cool for just a few minutes, and that now is right away down the bottom there. You wouldn't believe was how much was gone, or how far down it's gone. So I shall let that cool, and then we'll empty these jars, and we'll fill it up. So I'll be back in a minute. Right, so I've just emptied the jars. Let's see if we can decant some of this stuff. Mind your fingers, it is very hot. It's starting to set already, there's sort of a bit of a skin on the top. fingers because the jars are getting hot once you're filling them. I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough jars. And so, once they cool, that will suck that down and you'll get that nice pop when you open them. Just have enough for this fifth jar.
so we've got five jars and there's a spoonful left. I don't know if I can find something to put that in just to uh, There we go, we've got another jar that's not, let's just uh, clean it out. This one we'll use as our tester. See if I can pour that in there out of that. Because it's going hard a bit quick. be the wife telling me she wants picking up. So a brand new car, or new to her car, is packed up. Anyway, we've got five and a little bit jars. Um, I don't know if you can see. Let's, uh, let's check if you can see how clear that's gone. Let's see if it can look any better. Can't really see it. It doesn't sort of show it very well. Ow, that's hot. But that's much clearer than it was, and that would have stayed cloudy had you not, or had you squeezed the, the uh, bag when it was um, straining. So I'll have a clear up, and we'll let it cool, and then we'll have a bit of a taster. So I'll catch you in a minute once I've had a wash up. Okay, so the bit I really, really enjoy out of doing all of these uh, recipes and cookery bits, the eating. Now, you can see, I think, probably, why they call that jelly. Because jam don't shape like that. And that's set quite nicely, which is what we're aiming to achieve, get that set. So, give it a go. We've got a plain cracker, a bit of good old fashioned mature cheddar. Let's have a little dollop of this on top. Also, plenty of that. Let's see what happens. Losing a lot, but it's lovely. I'll tell you what. Another bit. It's sweet. Very flavoursome, like the, you get a real apple taste. And then you get that kick. The chilies kick in. It's beautiful. You'd think it's too sweet when you first taste it, but it really works well. Mm. Cracking. Another success, I think. So we'll wash it down with some of Mr. Weston's finest. Cheers. Thanks for watching, we'll catch you on the next one.